And this is the fear, the ego's little voice which never leaves until the end keeps whispering in our ears. Take one more step with Jesus, continue to ask his help to forgive, and you are in grave danger. You are returning to your mind, and remember what I told you long, long ago. Remain there, and God will find you. And when he does, he will not be merciful. Is annihilation what you want? In our fear, as we are subsequently told, we run back to the safe arms of our friends, sin, guilt, and death. Thus, we attack again ourselves and others. As Jesus explains here, we do so because we fear the destruction of our thought system. To the extent to which we identify with that thought system, we will believe we are being destroyed and that the light is shining away, not the darkness, but us. It is only by disidentifying with the ego when the decision maker becomes an observer and we watch what we do that we realize what disappear, disappears I'm sorry, is not truly us. It is the old self that will be gone, the thought system with which we once identified and held sacred. But that is not who we truly are. What typically happens with those who are unaware of this dynamic is that they are thrown back onto their ego and its specialness. This is the origin of what we usually refer to as spiritual specialness. They think that being students of this wonderful course makes them wonderful themselves without having to do the work of forgiveness. Inevitably, they begin to judge, justifying the attack by taking course passages out of context. It is important to be aware of the inner fear we discussed above in Chapter 2, the fear of release, of the light awakening us from the dream. The only way we are truly he healed is to realize that the darkness through which we walk is only the fear of the light and nothing more. To amplify this point, we will consider several brief references in this section that are among the most essential in A Course in Miracles. This theme of the atonement principle recurs again and again, emphasizing that even though within the dream we are free to believe what we wish, we destroyed God, crucified his son, and established a world better than heaven. This freedom does not make real what we believe. This is the good news that the separation never happened. Within the illusion we can dream what we wish. The mind is that powerful, but not to the extent that it can make illusions real. The source of our fear, therefore, is that the self we believe we are is illusory. We feverently believe we are alive, and billions support that belief. Whether or not people like us or we like them is irrelevant, because we all agree we exist as bodies. Yet. If it is true that our beliefs do not establish themselves as true, the ego is finished. This is the fact we do not want to see and is the core of our resistance to the atonement's simple truth. No one, therefore, is able to deny truth totally, even if he thinks he can. We think we can deny truth, which is why we are here. Yet this does not mean that we have actually done so. In addition, you cannot make untruth true. Regardless of how convincing the seeming witnesses are to the reality of this world and our perceptions, they still do not have the power to make the unreal real. Somewhere in our minds, that statement makes us quake with fear, because it means that no matter what we attempt to do with this self, we cannot establish a reality it does not have. This welcome news to, is welcome news to the right mind, but to the wrong mind, it is dreadful, and we will do everything in our power to blot it out. The world's purpose of eradicating the truth. You have not usurped the power of God, but you have lost it. Fortunately, to lose something does not mean that it, is, it has gone. It merely means that you do not remember where it is. 
Its existence does not depend on your ability to identify it or even place it. At the beginning of chapter 2, we saw how the ego told us we had observed the power of God, which is the meaning of sin. The above tells us this is false, yet we still believe God's power is gone. We all have had the experience of thinking we have lost an important piece of paper or something we know we still have somewhere but cannot find. Similarly, the love of God, our true identity as Christ, remains within our minds. We have not really lost it, but we have forgotten where it is and have lost awareness of it. But that is all. I'm going to go ahead and stop there today. We will pick up on our reading here tomorrow. I hope that you have a beautiful day. I know I kind of jumped into it right away today without an introduction, so I just thought if you're listening to this one after the other, you don't need to hear that each time, so let me know what you think of it, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a beautiful day. I do kind of like, I love to take this piecemeal. It's so much it's just so much and it can be so overwhelming so I like to take it in small little bites um, or to give it out or read it in small bites to help the um, absorption how about that the absorption of it thank you I love you have a beautiful day